There we go. And um, just for introductions, my name's Kate Bellow. I'm one of the counselors in the admissions office, and we're really excited that you're joining us today for this virtual academic session on chemical engineering at WPI. Um, we have Professor Kimiotech here with us today, and we have Alex, who is a senior who is majoring in chemical engineering. I don't want to steal your thunder, but he also happens to work in the admissions office, which is great. Um, and so we're going to spend some time giving you some general information. And, um, and again, um, we'll leave some time after this presentation for some questions and answers, which you can put in the Q&A. We're not going to be using the chat feature today. So with that, I am going to pass things over to Professor Kimiotech to take, take it over. Thank you, Kate, and good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to WPI. Um, as she mentioned, I am the um, a professor of practice in chemical engineering. I'm also an alumnus from the program from uh, 1980 and uh, currently serving as the assistant department head. Uh, who, and my job there is to uh, help coordinate all the courses and course scheduling and that sort of stuff in the department. Uh, I normally teach a bunch of senior classes and uh, pretty involved in campus faculty advisor for, for several clubs. And with me today uh, is one of our phenomenal seniors, uh, Alex Pohl, and I'll give him a moment to introduce himself. Go ahead, Alex. How are we doing, everybody? Uh, yep, so Alex Pohl, as mentioned, uh, I am a senior. Uh, crazy to think that I am a senior, but I am one. Um, of chemical engineering, I, outside of the classroom, I work in admissions, as Kate already mentioned. I was actually working with Kate uh, approximately four hours ago. I am a tour guide. I am on the club soccer team. I am in the Greek life. And I think that's it. But yep, love chemical engineering and excited to be here. Thanks so much. And um, Alex will be around throughout the presentation, available to answer any of the questions, particularly uh, those with have questions about student life and what it's like being a, a chemical engineering student here or living on campus. I have a, a, about a 20 minute presentation to share, give you a little bit of an overview of chemical engineering and, uh, and what that is like here at WPI. So, all right. Uh, thanks very much. And hopefully that is uh, visible for everybody. Um, so again, welcome. The, when I first joined chemical engineering back in the 1970s, I had no idea what it was, honestly. But my guidance counselor said, you're good in chemistry, you're good in math, so you should be a chemical engineer. Uh, it's a, def a discipline that's hard to define. Uh, it's very broad. It deals with all varieties of all the different sciences, chemistry, biology, physics. Uh, it does include math. Um, and can be working in industrial systems or natural systems and all matters of matter and of energy. Uh, the easiest way to describe it, I think, is we're probably all familiar with the, the chemist or the biologist uh, that makes a discovery in a lab. And the classic example right now is the mRNA vaccine uh, for COVID. The chemical engineer is the person who helps bring that to commerce, brings that to market. So the chemical engineers are the folks that help to make 500 million doses of that vaccine and, uh, and help distribute it worldwide. So what do we do? We start by taking a relatively low value raw material. Um, we might do a reaction with it. We might use a catalyst to help that reaction along. We do some separations and we turn into a high value product. Uh, for instance, the low value raw material for the, the vaccine. Uh, one of the primary ingredients is a lipid, uh, which you can find in, in common eggs, uh, chicken eggs, uh, extract from that. Um, and look how valuable the vaccine is for, for all of us. Uh, our goals is to do this all very safely, to do it in an environmentally responsible manner, to be efficient, sustainable and uh, economic. We, um, we do like to make a profit with all this. We work in many, many different scales and size scales and, and time scales. 
Uh, so you could look at everything from, for instance, the vaccine um, on, a, on nanoscales and all the way up to very, very large chemical plants. Um, I worked in a plant that, um, before coming back as a faculty member, worked in a plant that was a few square miles uh, in, in footprint. What do we do? Where do we go? We work in all kinds of industries. Um, I most recently was with, uh, with Dow Chemical Company, so a very traditional large chemical plant. But we have people all over the world. Um, we are production engineers helping them work on the processes to make them. Um, a lot of us go into management. Some folks go into design. That's the course I teach right now. Um, and some of us go and work in the environmental field, in safety fields. Uh, a number of us go into research uh, and, and come up with the next, the next vaccines. Um, some go into sales, you name it, we are there. Uh, we also have a number every year who go into law, into medicine. Uh, one, of my, one of my students in the class right now just came back from uh, interviewing at the medical schools. Another, I just wrote a recommendation for uh, patent. She wants to go to become a patent attorney. Uh, so we're all over. And some go into uh, military, government service, uh, NGOs, that sort of thing. We work in a wide variety of industries. Uh, advanced materials, so things like high-end ceramics or um, solid gen technology for, uh, for high-end insulation that might go onto a spaceship. Um, we can work in biotechnology or medicine, such as the vaccines. Um, my old partner for my senior thesis, my major qualifying project, works for Pfizer and was working on the, the vaccine. Um, we can go into consumer products and food and beverages. Um, believe it or not, we have a lot of graduates every year that go to work for the Pepsi companies. Uh, and one recently has been working on a new flavor for Doritos. Um, so we are there, uh, Procter & Gamble, you name it, we're, we're there. Environmental protection, uh, a number of us work in that area and we also partner uh, here at WPI, we partner very closely with our colleagues in environmental engineering. And a number of us do go into the traditional chemical industry, uh, the Dow's and DuPont's and, and so on of the world. In energy and fuels, we work both in the traditional areas. We uh, have a number of alumni working with ExxonMobil. We also are working in biofuels and in solar. Um, and finally, we have an awful lot of folks that go into microelectronics and nanotechnology. Um, one of the big the company that hires a lot of us is, uh, is Global Foundries in New York. Where they, make, uh, where they make all the, the chemicals that go into our devices. About 15 to 20% of us will stay on for grad school. Um, and those are folks who don't need a graduate degree to, to get a good job and a good career. Uh, but about 15, 20% of us choose to go into research. Um, and that often does require a graduate. And then finally, some go into design and construction. So why WPI chemical engineering? Um, if you're looking at WPI, you're probably looking at projects. Um, we are known and we've been known for project-based learning uh, since about 1970 when they changed the curriculum uh, for the WPI plan. So all our projects, all, all our students are required to take three significant projects. Um, I'll talk a little bit about those. We have some really, really interesting facilities. Uh, again, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, faculty, uh, I'll let Alex answer that question, whether or not our faculty is any good. Uh, I'm biased there. Uh, but I will say that I think we have some absolutely phenomenal students. Uh, I get to work with, when I was in industry, I got to hire people from uh, many, many schools, people all over the world. And I think our students are among the best. 
best engineers, best prepared, best people anywhere. Um, Project-based learning, uh, all the, the, the leadership that they get here. Um, and frankly, they're just really good, caring people. You will learn innovative thinking, you'll work in interdisciplinary programs, uh, and you will get a global experience. Um, and ultimately a really good career. So projects, three primary projects and you do a lot more, but there are three significant ones. Uh, the first typically uh, and often done sophomore year is in the humanities and arts. Uh, this is typically a, um, you get to choose the humanities and arts. We don't have say a, a language requirement or some specific uh, humanities requirements. Uh, and folks choose music or art or languages or um, literature or writing or history, uh, you name it. The, and normally that includes five total courses followed by a one course equivalent project. The most distinctive project, most distinctive part of WPI probably is what is usually done in the junior year. It's called the Interactive Qualifying Project or the IQP. And it is a project that bridges society and technology. It's often in the social science. It's not a chemical engineering project, uh, though it might have a chemical engineering component. And often um, folks will do this at one of our global project centers all around the world. Um, and they can range from helping bring water to a village in Namibia to helping catalog um, art in Venice. Uh, everything from you know, a uh, Europe, Africa, um, Asia Pacific, uh, oceanic areas, um, Iceland, all over the world, um, wonderful opportunities. And for chemical engineers, the big project is the senior project. Um, Alex and I will be doing a project together, um, starting that soon. Uh, but it is in chemical engineering. These are typically done in groups of three or four. Uh, and you can do them in a faculty research lab, working for one of our faculty. And I'll introduce you to some of those in just a bit. Uh, you can do it as, as Alex is at a local company where we help them with a, a problem that they're having. Or you can do it at one of our off-campus locations in France, in um, Modesto, California, in Brazil, or Shanghai, China. Um, and those are typically done at a partner, uh, usually, usually a university, but not always. If you choose, it is not required, but if you choose, uh, you can concentrate in a specific area, which means you take all your electives and you do your, your senior thesis, your MQP in that area. Uh, and we offer uh, uh, concentrations in energy, in the biological sciences, in environmental or in materials development. Facilities. We have really a very unique, uh, interesting 6,000 square foot, three-story, unit operations lab. Uh, this lab houses uh, a couple dozen different experiments. And Alex is working on this right now. He's, uh, you, we turn you loose on the different equipment, which we call unit operations. And they design experiments and execute on them and report back the results. It's where they practice all the theory that they, uh, they learned the previous three years. We have a, uh, Research labs, most professors have their own um, fundamental research labs. And then we also have any number of graduate and undergraduate computational facilities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, faculty and the faculty is growing. Um, we have a, a new faculty number starting just in January. Uh, but uh, just to briefly introduce you to, uh, to, to some of my colleagues. Um, Professor Abu Lail is a uh, is splits her time between here and environmental engineering, and she runs the unit operations lab. She is um, 
She's a graduate of our program. Dean Kim Sano, she, here he is uh, the, the Dean of Graduate Studies and um, she doesn't teach much anymore, but she still has an active research program. And her area of expertise is in the biological area. Uh, she's the one who found out why cranberry juice is so effective against um, urinary tract infections. Professor Deskins uh, is a computational type of person. He does, he looks at, at energy from a surface science standpoint and models catalytic reactions. Uh, Professor DiBiasio is, uh, has really switched. He started his career in the biological sciences and now he focuses on engineering education and very, very inventive uh, program. He, he really helped uh, energize our, our whole curriculum. Uh, Professor Dixon looks at energy from a reactor standpoint, a unit operation standpoint. Uh, if Professor Deskins is often looking at it at a surface, uh, Professor Dixon is looking at it from a, a, a specific piece of equipment. Um, does a lot of modeling there. And then Professor Kazansis looks at it from an entire kind of a, a whole chemical plant perspective, uh, very complex stuff. My area uh, um, of expertise is actually in chemical process safety, how to keep things from blowing up. Uh, Professor Roberts is our department head. Uh, Professor Roberts is an alumna of our program and uh, she, her area of expertise is in the biological sciences and she's using some very rare and endangered plants to make anti-cancer drugs how to uh, synthetically develop those. Professor Stewart is an alumna of our program. See, it's a trend, a lot of, a lot of alumni. Uh, and her area is in soft materials and that intersection of kind of smart materials. Um, if you think of like a new medical joint, you might need a cushioning agent uh, to go into that system. That's a lot of work in colloids also. Uh, Professor Teixeira, uh, is an alumnus of the program. And his area is similar to Professor Dixon. He does catalysis work uh, in the energy area. Uh, Professor Kimko is a thermodynamicist and his area is in biofuels. And he is trying to uh, improve the efficiency of it turning plants and, um, and waste materials into usable uh, liquid fuels. Professor Young, also in the biological sciences, um, he comes from Maine, and he is working at yeast catalyzed reactions, also for, for biopharma. Uh, Professor Zhao is working in kind of the, the micro end of things. So she's doing a lot of sensor type work, uh, implantable sensors uh, that you might use, if, say, for someone who has diabetes. And Professor Zorowski, um, it all helps us in our graduate program and in a lab. Uh, so mostly in, in the teaching area. And we have another person who is starting, another alumna who is starting in January and her area of expertise is in the, in the biological sciences also. Uh, so what will you do? You're going to analyze uh, and design chemical systems from the start to finish. Uh, that's what our seniors are working on right now. You're going to work in teams um, and you're going to do a lot of work in teams, a lot of work in teams, um, and from right from the start, because the world is with teamwork. So you're going to com learn to uh, communicate effectively. You're going to learn how to do projects from start to finish. You're going to get all the same chemical engineering principles and foundational material that is in any accredited program. And you're going to look at that from a societal issue, societal perspective and address uh, global issues. You're going to make a lot of money when you graduate. Um, we are highly employable and we, uh, we make very good money. Um, these data are from March 2020. So this is in the middle of the pandemic. Um, we were, it was a little bit of an odd year for, uh, for employment. Um, normally, we, we have um, usually about 80% um, employed at, at graduation. Uh, that year with the pandemic, we were down at, uh, at 59%. And a lot stayed on for graduate school. 
Uh, and that's because just a lot of companies couldn't process people because of, uh, because of the, the COVID restrictions. Um, so usually it's 70, 75%, maybe even 80% go to employment net to grad school. Um, we, again, very highly, um, we're, we're in high demand. Um, everything from, the, as I mentioned, you know, things like Frito-Lay, making chips and Doritos, which are high in demand, to making the mRNA vaccines. Um, so you will, you will do well. A couple of quotes and then turn it over to Alex. Um, we have some quotes from some of our more famous alumni. Um, Mike Dolan was class of 74, just a little bit before me. Mike went on to become the executive VP of ExxonMobil. He wanted to see the world. And so right out of school, he went off and saw the world. I think, I think Saudi was his first, uh, first job out of school with, uh, with that was then mobile company. Um, Michelle, class of 90, um, really hasn't used her chem engineering degree, but it used her in the management and leadership skills. So she goes back and forth between uh, Starbucks and Kohl's. She's currently the CEO of Kohl's uh, and has been there in senior leadership for a bit. Uh, and she, you know, she really credits the, the leadership that she developed uh, and her professors. And again, I'll, I'll defer to Alex on, on that piece of it. Um, you could even become a screenwriter. Uh, Nancy, uh, classmate of Michelle, class of 90, uh, went on to, to um, be a screenwriter for South Park, among other things. And uh, she credits, you, if you can get through Orgo, you can get through pretty much anything. It's a tough curriculum, uh, but we are there. We work as teams. We work as teams uh, with, with students, faculty, and staff. Um, we mentioned this before. It's a very diverse engineering discipline, uh, work in many, many industries, uh, and think really in terms of systems. Um, as students, a lot of opportunity to, to do research, to present that research at conferences. We even hosted a conference a few years back, um, at which, which our American Institute of Chemical Engineers student group ran from start to finish. You can participate in pretty much anything. Um, Greek life, athletics, um, performing arts, you name it. Um, and uh, you'll do some really creative things. You see um, in the center, bottom center, uh, there is uh, one of our alumni, Chris Hango, who uh, is very, very <clears throat> doing a, a wonderful job collecting biomass for making biofuels and that biomass is um, waste product at a farm in France. Um, Chris is now uh, kind of full circle. He went to get his PhD and he is now in uh, working for Incredible Foods. Uh, making vegetable based foods. Mentioned uh, Sue is our department head. Um, but I'd like to turn it over to, uh, to Alex now. Alex, I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you did a great job covering everything. Um, I will say as a student that he is telling the truth um, with pretty much all of that. Um, it definitely is a great, um, great, great major. Um, it's definitely very difficult. Um, just coming in freshman year, you're gonna take your basic chemistry courses. And again, right from the get-go, you're going to be doing project-based work. You're gonna be in lab and that's kind of where you're going to get that practice. And then you'll have class and you'll be doing projects in class as well. And that'll be that theory, but a little bit more um, um, applied through, th through theory, but it will be a project in a group setting um, in addition to your lab courses. And then as you move on, through your sophomore year, you'll do your chem eng series where you're basically putting down the fundamentals and the roots of chemical engineering all at the same time while doing group work. Um, one of my favorite projects that I have done at WPI occurred in my sophomore year. It was an industrial mediation project in Asheville, North Carolina. We were looking at a real super fun site and we were basically environmental consultants for this site, making a 
you know, a mock company and we were figuring out how to solve the problem, the remediation problem, working with social, political, and, you know, the economic struggles of the real world as a sophomore in college, you know, fresh out of my freshman year, never really having to think about the real world on a big scale. And here we are basically placed in Asheville, North Carolina, you know, placed there, um, working for this company and figuring out how to deal with, you know, remediating this site, um, along with all of the economic struggles and the social struggles of that. And I, I, that's definitely been one of my favorite projects. I have it on my resume. I talk about it to companies all the time and explain, you know, what an impact that project had on me. Um, and then kind of moving into your junior year, you'll do the Orgo series, which is fun and kind of get a little bit more of your engineering sciences and your background understanding of ChemEng. And then you'll be where I am right now with Professor Kimiotech um, taking chemical engineering design uh, looking at basically the entire chemical engineering process on a large scale, doing plant design, you'll do, you know, general reactor design, um, and then also be taking unit operations, which he spoke about, um, and that'll be in the lab, hands-on, going through different types of unit operations. You could be doing gas flow. That's what I did last week. This week I did fleet, uh, plate heat exchangers. Um, and that's just, again, kind of when, when you get here, <laughs> you'll understand, but you're basically looking at different functions within chemical engineering systems. Um, but I think it really is one of the best majors on campus. I, I, I hear a lot from different majors, what a close group we are um, as chemical engineers. And I really think it is because of the project work that we do. A lot of my, my very close friends are chemical engineers, I would say probably my three closest friends are chemical engineers <laughs> and it's not because we're always together. It's just because we are always together, um, you know, just doing work. And then outside of the classroom, he talked about all of those involvements right at the end there. Um, and it just kind of, there's a lot of overlap there and we really kind of have become a family. I am sitting in like a, the second library, it's called the innovation studios right in the heart of campus. And I could spot 10 chemical engineers. There's one, two feet away from me to my right. Um, so, and we're all doing the exact same work, um, but it, it truly is a family and you'll kind of see it as you develop across the, across the four years. Um, and then to speak about the professors, ironically, me and professor Kimi Otek go way back actually to this session. I sat in, I think it was Fuller or it might've been Olin. I don't remember exactly where it was. Um, but he was giving this presentation to me in the, what was the spring of, right before I came to WPI um, as a, you know, almost graduate, graduated senior of high school. And he spoke about chemical engineering. And I was like, wow, this is, this is really, really, really awesome. And then I went to him maybe two months into school. And I was like, hi, like I saw you in the information session. Um, like I just have a couple of questions about like my major and like maybe double majoring and minoring. And he was like, oh, absolutely, like, sit down. I would love to talk to you. And, like, said, and this is, like, stuck with me my entire four years. He was like, it doesn't matter what you do at all. He was like, you're going to be so ready coming out of chemical engineering that you'll get a job. And I, he didn't even know who I was. I could have failed all my classes so far at school. And he was still like, you will get a job. You will be ready. Um, and that's something that I think is completely and entirely true. And all the professors feel that way. And they're very supportive. Um, you could walk into their office at any time and they would be very up to having a conversation with you about chemical engineering or life or, you know, future. We have several coffee shops in the area and yes. we have a lot of time where we go and grab a coffee and talk about life and talk about career and talk about life goals. Yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that about covers it. Uh, Professor Jimmy and Tech, did I? Did I do a good job? <laughs> Great job, Alex. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, and then maybe we could talk about our MQP in a little bit if we get a question about it. Any any questions? I don't not seeing any in the Q and A, but yeah, feel free to put them in the Q and A, and then we'll we'll um, questions about the major. You could ask Alex a question about student life, balancing the major on campus. I love what you just said, though, about the coffee shops and connecting, because I hear that all the time from students and faculty. So that's really nice to hear. And we have a new Starbucks on campus. So there's even one more place where you can go grab that favorite coffee drink. We do. WPI runs on Duncan now. 
<laughs> yes, we do have a Duncan. We do have a Duncan. We're very loyal. If you want to get off campus, there's a really nice coffee shop just about a, a five minute walk away. Yes, the bean counter. Alex, how is it? Now you're a student athlete. Um, how is it balancing academics and D3 athletics? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say it's fairly um, straightforward. I definitely, my, my freshman year, it was kind of a, an interesting juggle, but I think anybody coming into college as an athlete um, has understood the struggles of balancing school and work. Uh, there's definitely the fast paced environment of WPI. So there's that, you know, regular adjustment period there. Um, but definitely kind of having that, that time for sports and then that time for school, that was always something that kind of kept me on track. Like, okay, I have soccer, so I need to make sure that I do my homework before this time. And then after that, like, I'm going to have this time to study. And I think for a lot of students that come in playing sports, will kind of already have that mentality. It'll just kind of be adjusting for that slight uptick in work and pace, you know, just the regular WPI way. Um, but again, with the support of professors and campus and then, you know, all of the friends that you'll make doing your project work, it, it, it is a pretty smooth adjustment, I would say. Um, but you are a student athlete, not an athlete student. I've always lived by that. Any questions? Feel free to put questions in the q and I know that this that um, Alex was going to speak and that was going to be sort of the end of the presentation part of this session. So feel free to, to throw any questions out. How about clubs? What kind of clubs do we have? What kind of clubs do we have? What kind of clubs do we not have? I think <laughs> is the better question. Um, I would say we pretty much have everything under the sun. Um, there, I mean, to lead with the, you know, the famous one, the underwater hockey club, um, where you play hockey underneath the water with scuba gear on, and then you go down and hit the puck and, you know, until you can't breathe anymore, you come back up. Um, I would say that's definitely a, the most famous one. At least when I was coming here, I was like, oh, I have to join that. That's awesome. Um, there's the Lego club. There's the cheese. There's two cheese clubs. One is fans of cheese and they talk about different types of cheeses and then there's the other cheese club where they focus on eating cheeses and kind of the taste experience of having cheese um, so those are two separate clubs and then there's clubs for all of the majors there's smart which is um I, I should have known the acronym before i said smart but it's basically students making smart decisions and in, in leadership roles on campus and promoting you know safe behavior um off campus and there's, I think, three clubs just for that alone. Uh, and if there's not something for you when you get here, I encourage all students to, you know, start a club. Uh, I tried my, my sophomore year, but it didn't pick up a lot of steam. But it was, <laughs> it was something I thought would be a really good idea. And, you know, I hope, I hope that whatever clubs you guys start when you get here, um, if you don't find one that you're interested in, will you know, make a real impact. And it's something that at least you and a group of people can enjoy. So there's something like 250 about. different clubs around. Yeah. Right now it's 235, but ah. who's counting? Who's counting? Um, and yeah, just a couple. The, yeah, we have the campus activities fair at the start of the academic year. So when you go through new student orientation, you sort of end with the campus activities fair. But I had a quick follow-up question for you, Alex. Um, and some of you who are attending this may have either been to campus for a session or, um, and I and actually the Q&A question coming in is similar to what I'm gonna ask. Um, so can you talk a little bit, Alex, just about sort of the term system because at WPI, for those of you that may or may not know this already, we work on a term system versus semester. And so with the term system, each term is seven weeks and you take three classes per term. So it is a little bit different um, than what you might have experienced in high school. So do, could you just talk to that, which is a question that just came in. When you were a freshman, did you ever feel overwhelmed? Was the curriculum really hard? Gotcha, I see that question. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So I'll kind of center it around chemical engineering since that is the focus of this session. Um, so as a chemical engineering student, you'll come in and you'll start taking your calculus courses and you'll also start with your regular chemistry courses. Um, calculus, you kind of have, a little bit of leeway where you would like to start 
because um, there's retroactive credit. So if you don't start in Chem 1, and, or if you don't start in Calc 1, you want to start in Calc 3, you pass Calc 3 and 4, then you get credit for all the ones beforehand. So that's kind of unique just for the Calc series, but as a chemical engineering major, you will have to take um, calculus as a requirement. Um, but focusing on those chemistry courses, they basically build upon each other. Um, so you'll come in a term and you'll take Chem 1. You'll have a lab and your regular lecture period, and you'll go from there across those seven weeks and you'll learn kind of like a little piece of the puzzle. And then from there, you'll go into B term and you'll get that next piece and they'll, they'll connect. And then you get that third piece in C term and that, that fourth piece in D term. And that'll kind of paint the entire picture across the year um, of everything that you're learning. So like that fast paced, overwhelmed feeling, like, yes, it is there. Um, but I will say in terms of knowledge and retention um, and the information being given to you, it's definitely not crammed. Um, at times it will feel fast, but a lot of the times it will be covered again, or it'll be, you know, something, a small piece of a bigger picture. Um, so you might have missed it that first time, but then there'll be B term and you'll kind of be able to catch it that second time. And it, that is still even true now. Um, your sophomore year, you'll take that chem -eng series where you kind of get the fundamentals of everything chemical engineering, all process learning and understanding of chemical engineering, the design aspect, different functions, um, how a process works, just a very basic flow process. Um, and then you'll see it again your junior year when you're taking uh, mass transfer and heat transfer. And then again, your senior year as you're taking class with Professor Kimio Tech in chemical engineering design and unit ops. Um, so the, the concepts will constantly be brought back up and reminded. So you might miss it that first time. And, you know, that feeling of being overwhelmed and that constant fast paced new information. Um, but it, it will be brought up again, I promise. And then again, having that support system, I will say, for the overwhelming piece. Um, professors understand they're teaching the information in seven weeks as well they're just as overwhelmed as we are um, so they want to help you and they're willing to help you because they understand what it's like um, so definitely use your resources use your professors um, what kind of resources are there out there for say yeah. students okay so outside of professors um, you're going to have your tas for your class which are your teacher's assistant or your teaching assistants um, they are a student that has taken the course before, so they understand the, um, we'll say the struggles of the class and the difficulties of a, you know, seven week term in a fast paced environment. Um, so, so they'll, they'll be there and they'll hold office hour sessions so you can go in and you can do a one on one before a test like, oh, hey, I'm really unsure about this concept or, you know, it could be the middle of the term and you're trying to do a homework and you're unsure about a homework question. And, you know, they have the answers and everything and they understand the concepts and they've taken the class and they can sit down and do a one-on-one -on -one session with you. A lot of the times they'll do a group session. Um, speaking of office hours, your professor will also hold office hours, um, you know, after class during the week. And, you know, you can also shoot an email. Hey, I can't make office hours this week. I have soccer practice. Can, you know, we please meet outside of office hours at some point and, you know, there's plenty of coffee shops or you can just go to their office and, you know, have that quick one on one to go over some concepts that you're unsure of. There's also um, the math, MASH, Math and Science Help Center. Uh, it's a student help center. It's right in uh, the, the wedge, which is in between Morgan and Daniels. Uh, it's been a minute since I've been over by the wedge. Um, but yeah, so the wedge is great. That's a student run help center and you know, it's math and science. So it's again, students that have taken the classes, they're familiar with the courses or at least the coursework and the concepts. And you can go there, book an appointment and they'll be you know, more than welcome to help you with whatever concepts you need help with. Um, I know at least for organic chemistry, there was actually a specific person assigned at the MASH help center um, for the course. And there was you know, specific hours that you could go and see that tutor in the MASH Center, or you could, you know, book a time whenever was whenever was best. That's great. And we have time for, let's see, yeah, we one, have. we have a couple more questions. One is what kind of internships do students usually have? Why don't I cover that one? Yep. Um, wide variety. That's good. The, um, we have awful wide variety of internships. It is a little bit difficult to get one uh, in chemical engineering after the first year, but widely available after second year and third year. Um, we also have co-ops available, but th those are, are 
less common for uh, students. Um, but a lot of local industries, a lot of industries around the U.S. Um, it, it, you know, and, and people are going and working at companies for the summer. You can also do a research experience where you go to a, another university and, and do um, um, work for a professor there. I know we have one more um, approximate class size. Oh, Kate, you're answering that. I started to type it just in case we ran out of time, but um, I don't have to do that. We can yeah. answer that one live. The largest lecture hall we have, I see it's, I believe, about 130, 150, something like that. Um, and that's, those are about as big as you'd get. And those would be for, um, for first year calc, chem, physics, things like that. Um, by the time you get to senior year, the, as you start specializing, the, the class size gets a lot lower. Um, for instance, in the senior year, we try to, in chem -Eng, we try to keep the class size limited to say 50. Um, we graduate about 100 a year, so it, uh, you know, we kind of split it in half. Um, another normal question is what's, what's diversity like in chem -Eng? And we have been about 50-50. Um, male, female for pretty much 15 years or so. Um, yeah. That's great. Well, thank you both. We're coming up to the end of the time allotted for this session. So what I am going to do is I'm going to do first thing I'm going to put in the chat or the Q&A, I think it's the chat actually, is just a link to our website admission pages. We have a lot of other virtual uh, events and, and academic department sessions that we'll be offering throughout the course of the fall. We'll also do a lot of programming, hopefully in person, um, department sessions in the spring for accepted students as well. So um, more to come on that. Um, but if you have any questions, I'm going to drop my email in the chat as well. And you can feel free to reach out to me and I can put you in touch with um, either Alex or Professor Professor Kimiotech as well. Um, I'm happy to do that. And I wanna thank you both um, for being on this panel today. And um, thanks everybody for attending and have a great, great rest of your day. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Bye now. Thanks everybody. Take care. Thanks, Kate. Thank you.